Well, hello there again. Since recently my amplifier, uh, at least the output stage of it, gave up and uh, I'm rebuilding this thing to have new and only digital components, I'm trying to find a new output stage. Now, just so I can still listen to some music and have the possibility of using my setup, I bought one of these modules. Now, this is a Chinese um, 2 times 100 watt amp. Uh, and it has two amplifier chips underneath here. And these are pretty common, unfortunately. This module, um, yeah, it's not really good. The problem is uh, it's very noisy because both of these chips are configured as master. You have to swap some resistors, bridge out a resistor up here, and do all sorts of stuff in order to get this to work properly. I even had to, um, yeah, lower the input impedance because this thing was producing static like crazy. And, uh, yeah, even after all that, the sound wasn't balanced out properly and whatnot, so, yeah, it took quite a lot of modifying this thing in order to work properly. Now, this is one of these uh, 10 euro Chinese amplifiers, and they are fairly common. I mean, probably everyone has seen these already, I think the company is called KK Moon or something like that. On Amazon, so, yeah, they do the job fine, but this particular model... Well, it's just not really good. So... Now I'm gonna uh, continue using this one at least for a little bit, because, well, uh, I cannot use that at my main amplifier anymore. So, with the modifications it's okay, but it's just not great. And uh, I initially was planning on putting this thing into that one as the output stage, but uh, no, that's not gonna happen. So, instead, I bought a one that was a little bit more expensive. This one is like uh, 23 euros or so, has a nice cooler on it, and also overall just looks a whole lot better. It looks much nicer and cleaner, it's made by the same company, and it uses a TDA7498 chip. So that's 2 times 160 watts on one chip, and uh, yeah, this thing is much better, the spec sheet is much better. And uh, the power begins to, well, at least the efficiency or power or whatever, begins to drop around uh, 100 watts. After that, it's not as great anymore. But uh, there's no way I'm even going to go and go that high because uh, the speakers I'm using are rated for a maximum of 80 watts. So, this thing has absolutely no problems. It's perfect. I had no issues with this thing whatsoever. It produces no noise. It's... Literally just gorgeous. There's no even a, a banging sound or anything when you power this thing up, so you don't even need to add like a speaker protection reel or anything to this. I will eventually still do that, and I am going to use this thing in that amplifier in the end, because I'm so happy with this thing, and it just performs exactly like I want it to. Only thing I will probably replace the potential with a digital one. So... Now, unfortunately, there's one tiny modification we have to do, and that is to swap out the uh, heatsink compound, or the thermal compound we have underneath our nice little heatsink here. And uh, why? Well, I have seen a bunch of reviews where uh, people have managed to get this chip to blow up. And the issue was because way too much heat uh, thermal compound has been applied uh, sometimes on these chips, and it's pretty much everywhere but not on the chip. So, flip this thing over, undo the two clips we have here. You can just use your fingernails, or if you have a tool, use that. But fingernails can do that just fine. And this should come off very nice and easy. Oops, uh, that was meant to happen, totally. All right, as you can see, that is a lot of thermal compound. Um, and there's barely any in the center of it. It also looks very, very watery, and you can see, I don't know if you always see that. Let me focus on that. It's uh, very, very clear in the center. So I'm not liking that at all. Now again, I am not expecting hugely of a uh, 23 euro amplifier, so of course there's gonna be some cuts in the price somewhere, because of course you have to, and uh, yeah, just means that you, as the one who buys this thing, since uh, people 
you generally buy these, like to tinker on a little bit, have to do a slight modification in order to have proper thermal compound on it, which is no issue really. All you pretty much need is some isopropanol, which I've got over here, new thermal compound, like that. This is some cheap one, but it's really good. And some paper. And all we're gonna do is just wipe off the old thermal compound, thermal paste, off the heatsink and off the chip. Make sure you don't get it on your fingers because that stuff is a bit nasty and toxic. So, and do the same for the chip. Just clean this thing up a little bit, because damn, that thermal compound is literally everywhere, but not on the chip. in the pins, great. Uh, let's get some Probably use some cotton swabs or Q-tips for this, because it's gonna make a lot of things a whole lot easier and better. Oh, the stuff usually is not conductive, so a lot of the stuff unfortunately is spread in between the pins and there's nothing really that you can do to get that off. But it should be just fine. So all that's left to do now is take our new one, add a tiny, tiny bit of it on the chip. These things have a lot of friction in them, so be careful you don't end up putting a huge blob on it. There we go. That's already more than enough. You really do not need a lot of this stuff because you're gonna have exactly the issue this thing had before. And after that, we're gonna put the heatsink back on. Now I have to search for the uh, pin because that kind of flew off. Just press that in, I'll search for the other one, and then it's this modification complete. It's not really a modification, just a little bit of advice and improving this thing a little bit.